game of the season against the Panthers last night as Cam Newton completed a career low 10 passes for a career worse 35 percent completion completion percentage. Drew Brees was 24 of 34 for 297 yards with a touchdown and a pick in the win. Stephen A, they won on the road for the very first time this season. Are you ready to jump back on the Saints bandwagon? No, I am not because of the same reason that I jumped off it. I'm going to stay off of it and that is because I do not believe in this defense of Rob Ryan's. It's that simple. Let's not engage in, in, in being fooled uh, by what's happening with the New Orleans Saints right now. Skip Bayless, last night, they rushed 37 times. Mark Ingram rushed the ball 30 times. Uh, obviously, Drew Brees ran the ball an additional four times. This kid, Cadet, ran it twice. Edwin Baker ran it once. That's 37 times uh, the New Orleans Saints have ran the football. So in, in light of that reality, it's the same principle. I can't sit there and call the Dallas Cowboys to the carpet and say they're protecting their defense because they're giving DeMarco Murray the ball all the time, but ignore what New Orleans is doing when it comes to their running game, led over the last two weeks anyway by Mark Ingram. They're moving the chains. They're, being, they're going about the business of keeping the defense off the field and essentially protecting them from themselves. That's what I see from the New Orleans Saints right now. I'm not fooled. I'm not caught up in the sauce or anything like that. I have to see Rob Ryan's defense legitimately go about the business of stopping some semblance of a formidable offense. Cam Newton has no help. This kid, Benjamin, out of Florida State, is his lone weapon. You know the Carolina Panthers walked into the season foolishly, have, mind you, having gotten rid of their four primary weapons for Cam Newton. And Steve Smith, LaFell, uh, Ted Ginn Jr., I think this kid, Hickson, they got rid of all of these guys, and all you left him with is Olsen and Benjamin. And that's really about it. So Cam Newton doesn't have the requisite weapons. He had to learn with new guys and it's showing because over the last several weeks they've struggled. 10 for 28 for 151 yards last night. That's just putrid. That's unimpressive uh, and, and we know that Carolina's offense isn't that formidable and their defense has been relatively suspect over the last few weeks as well. So they're simply not looking like a good football team right now. That doesn't tell me a lot about Rob Ryan and his Saints defense. That tells me a lot about the Carolina Panthers. So you're still done with your Super Bowl pick? I'm still done with them. Okay. I got to give the Saints a little credit here. I'm not on their bandwagon, but listen, to finally break through and win a road game for the first time in five tries this year, and remember how they had to do it? They played on Sunday night and had to travel and play on Thursday night. It does not get any tougher in this league than that duty. And... They were impressive to me. Again, I had about half an eye on this game trying to watch the other two. Yes. But listen, I, I still have some – I can't figure out the Carolina Panthers. I have some respect for Cam and his offense. I get you about the weapons. He doesn't exactly have Peyton Manning's weapons. But they have shown flashes of – not brilliance, but goodness occasionally this year. They went up to, to uh, Cincinnati and took them into overtime. They clobbered Detroit down in Carolina. So for Rob Ryan's defense to go in there on such a short week and hold that offense to 231 at home, that, that's amazing to me. And I don't know what was wrong with Cam last night, but that's just, again, yeah. weapons or no weapons to have a career low, as Kerry said, 10 completions. What would you say, 35%? 35%. That's pretty rotten, man. I well, mean, you're a little better than that. So I well, keep trying to hang in. We both picked Carolina yesterday. Yes. I did. I thought they could win at home and, mm -hmm. and stay in the division race. And now, if, if I can go this far, it looks like at 4-4, four and four, New Orleans is controlling this division. I mean, that's well, how bad this division is. They're con exactly. Yeah. They're controlling the division by default because the division stinks. Atlanta stinks, and Mike Smith's about to get himself fired. Uh, you know, I don't uh, know what's you, going on coach, with Lovey. Coach, 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 coach Ron Rivera is about to get himself fired. Yeah. Uh, Lovey Smith, <laughs> right now, at least for the moment, Tampa Bay's probably regretting and bringing him on board. Uh, it's, it's just a mess in the South. It really comes down to. But, Kerry, uh, to get to your interview that you did with Cam Newton for 360, for Skip to allude to what you've alluded to in the past about Cam Newton. I think it's important that we recognize this right here on this show. We, we should all be alarmed by what we're seeing from Cam Newton. And I'm not talking about just his game. I'm talking about the attitude. I watch other quarterbacks throughout the NFL. I mean, you see guys that are considerably older, sure. not nearly as athletic, 
but very inspirational. They sort of have this this thing about them, Skip, where there's a capability to galvanize troops and bring dudes together. Yep. Every time I see, and maybe, and, and, and let me qualify this comment by saying it's from afar. I haven't been to a Carolina Panthers game, so I don't know. I can't go by anything but the TV angles. But every time I see Cam Newton, that if he's not scoring a touchdown and doing this, mm. then what you see is a guy that looks melancholy, if not flat out sad. Mm -hmm. He looks to be somebody that's separate from the pack. You never see him on the sidelines with anybody. You see, whether it's Peyton Manning, it's Tom Brady, you can go to an Andy Dalton. You could go, uh, you know, to Aaron Rodgers, or you could go to a Colin Kaepernick and RG3. You see guys talking to the offensive linemen, talking to receivers. Conversations are taking place. The game is being discussed. It just this vibe that comes off that says, we're still in this. We got things to do. Cam just seems alone. And I don't I want to preface it by saying, Skip, I may not be accurate because yeah. I only go by the television angles. I really, really don't know. But based on what we see on television, he almost seems like a loner. Now that's the, that appears to be the antithesis of the Cam Newton we see when we talk to him, when we've met him, you know, see great smile and, you know, just looks great, you know, seems like a great, great person. And he may very well be all those things. But as a quarterback, you got to lead mm. and you got to galvanize and bring people together. And he just always seems alone. Mm. And it's coming across on the field because every time something goes wrong, he puts his and, it, and it's usually somebody else's mistake, not his. He puts his head down. He just seems out of it, man. I, I don't know, but I, I don't. I don't like it. I don't yep. like it. Yeah. My instincts are your instincts, which is why I look forward to Carrie's piece next Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, at 8 Eastern. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday at 8 Eastern All on right. ESPN. Uh, Stephen A. and Skip, you guys both bring up good points about Cam, and that's what we explore in the piece. We try to figure out when do you find out you're that leader on and off the field. So that's a great segue for it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Coming up next, though, folks, let's talk about the Jets.